Praise God, everybody. Welcome to our channel, Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel, and I'm here with my lovely wife. My name is Frida. Praise God, we welcome you in the name of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And this channel, we're going to talk about it later on, but before we get into it, we want to welcome you, and we're so glad that you could tune in this day, and we're going to bring you some amazing insights from the Word of God. And as the body of Christ, we believe that the Word of God has to exhort up and lift up the name of Jesus yes. more than we getting lifted up, but to lift up the name of Jesus. So that as the name of Jesus is lifted up, all men will be drawn unto the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. So we're so happy to uh, bring this over here to you this evening in the name of our Most High Living God. So let's get in a time of prayer before we get to an intro and give you a background of what we're about to do and background in our channel. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are mighty, you are awesome, you are worthy, that you are sovereign in every situation, even though we are not, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for creating us. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us from the bondage of sin. Thank you, Lord, that you came into our lives and you set us free, Lord, from darkness into the marvelous light of your glorious gospel. Lord, we commit the rest of this evening into your hands as we use social media to pronounce and to declare and to speak out your word, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the body of Christ will be encouraged. And this day we pray for all those who are listening, all the men and women and even young people, Lord, wherever they are, all across India and all across other places, Father, that they will be edified in the yes. word of God, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you will strengthen yes. and build up your body. Yes. And Lord, it's not our voice. Let it be the voice of the sweet Holy Spirit ministering and speaking to your people this day. Be glorified in everything that's being done in Sedawiya. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I want to give you a quick background about uh, the YouTube channel that we have. It's called Chosen Treasure. Frida and I started this up, uh, I think it's about, what, four? Yeah, three to four years ago. Three to four years ago. We had a couple of videos sitting on it and... Um, we are getting back into it after a very long time. The Lord placed it in our spirit a couple of weeks back to get back and using social media to um, exhort and to encourage and to edify the body of Christ to be equipped, especially in these end times that we're staying in very, very difficult, uncertain times. But we know one thing for certain that those who are rooted in God's word, those who are rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have nothing to fear mm -hmm. because everything that comes from the Lord is good and pleasant in our lives. And... The name of our channel is called Chosen Treasure, and I'm going to tell Frida to read the scripture verse over here from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and that will give you a little background of why the Lord endorsed, or I would say gave us that name, and I'll take it from there. Okay, there you go. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Praise God. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people. That's what the Lord calls us. And as believers in the body of Christ, that may seem like we are very special, that we're above other people, we're elite, and we are so spectacular. No, that's not what the Word of God says that we are. We are separated. We are called forth out of darkness into His marvelous light. And the key verse over there that we believe is we can give praises to our God because He called us out of darkness into, our marvel into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And chosen means that we are set apart, separated. We are different from other people. That's what believers have to be, different from other people, even though the Word of God says that we are in the world, Lord. we are not part of the of world the world. system. We do not bow down to the world culture. We only bow our knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. And treasure, when you think about a treasure, it's something that you would hold on to. You will take every care and need of it. You will guard it with your life. Mm -hmm. I always think about um, the London Bridge. I think it's called the Tower Bridge back in London. It's a couple, I went back there in the 80s. And I saw the crown jewels that belongs to, was it <laughs> Queen Elizabeth now? Yeah, I think that that's, I, I gotta get confused with the names, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. And I remember that the way they enclosed it and they had gods all around. And you can't even stop for just a couple of seconds just to look at it, take photographs. You gotta keep moving. They guard that treasure. They are so possessive of it. 
And that exactly is how the Lord sees the church, the bride. That's how the Lord sees you, dear brother, dear sister, mm -hmm. dear family in the Lord. He guards us. He loves us. And this is to say that God is jealous over his people. Amen. And he's very possessive. Yes. Now, married couples would understand what being possessive <laughs> is all about. Sometimes we get very over-possessive. Sometimes we do it with our children. We get so over-protective, so over-possessive. It has some good things that come out of it, and maybe not some good things. But when we see the Lord possessive over his church and over his people, we know we are safe in the arms of Abba Father. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Lord gave us that name, Chosen Treasure. You can please go to our website. Uh, no, we don't have a website. To our YouTube channel and um, subscribe to it. And right now we have a couple of videos with praise and worship, all copyrighted. And uh, we are planning to do these videos every, every week, mm -hmm. praise God, as the Lord wills it. It's not kind of easy. We have a very simple setup over here, but as the Lord wills it, we are going to be doing it mm -hmm. to bring you the Word of God. Now, a couple of things I just want to lay out over there like a disclaimer. We don't profess to know everything in the Word of God. We're not right up there. We're not super spiritual. We're all sinners in the sight of the Lord. We're all unworthy, but His grace his mercy, his faithfulness is exactly what's, ne what's needed in our lives. Yes. And we are so thankful that the Lord pours out his grace upon our life. And we're so thankful and so happy that the Lord pours out his joy and his grace upon your life on a daily basis. So we don't claim to be super spiritual to know everything about the word of God. As preachers, as ministers, we're also students and servants. We serve our master. He's our Lord. He's our savior. He bought us. He redeemed us. He's sanctifying us. And we can go on to say that he's teaching us every day as we read the word of God, every day as we pray. And when we get into a time of fasting and intercession, the Lord is teaching us. And I hope and pray that the Lord will also begin to teach you, that you will be teachable, that you will say, Lord, Master, Abba, teach me. I want to be taught by your yes, word. Yes. And this is all about the Lord Jesus. This is not about our YouTube channel. <laughs> this is not to elevate ourselves and to put out a name out there and to be popular and all. No, we are all servants of the Most Amen. High Living God. We are still being taught by God's word and by his Holy Spirit how to get involved more and more in ministry to be credible to be competent to be confident in ministry and to preach and to teach and to encourage the body of mm -hmm. christ that even if one soul is encouraged mm -hmm. praise god yes. we're so happy and if one soul is saved more than us getting all rejoicing and happy yes. heaven rejoices Amen. so that's very important so that was a scripture verse of first peter chapter 2 verse 9 chosen generation many are called but few are chosen that's what the lord jesus said and I pray that you will choose to be chosen. Say, Lord, I want to be chosen. Lord, I, I want to walk in your ways. I, I want to do what you call me to do. We are not self-proclaimed prophets and prophetesses. We are not here to release a prophetic word every week or every day in your life. And um, I see a lot of people in the body of Christ tuning on to social media just to get a prophetic word. And when it doesn't take place or doesn't come to pass, in their lives they get so disappointed so broken and it n does nothing but damage the body of christ so just to get that out of there we are here as servants of the lord to talk about end time prophetic revelation that comes from the word of god Amen. the lord has not given me or frida new revelation we don't need it and i, I don't want to sound boastful we are because we have everything in the word of god Amen. you want a revelation please dear brother please dear sister go to the Word of God Amen. everything is there it's all written the Lord is a God of order not of chaos everything he wants you to know in his word from Genesis the first letter all the way to Revelation the last letter over there so I want to talk this day uh, really quick about one of the main focuses of what we are going to be presenting on our channel and as a couple of we, uh, we are very interested in eschatology, that is the study of end times. And I remember seeing this uh, Instagram meme, M-E-M-E, -E, 
My daughter has to correct me sometimes. Sometimes I say Mimi. I think it's meme, right? <laughs> it's a meme. Yeah. It's a meme. Yeah, it's a meme. Mm -hmm. um, where they got this lady and looking out and um, she's looking at all what's happening around you with the C-19, with the jab and um, with the uh, passports. And, you know, I got to be very careful with the words I use. I don't sound too political a week or two. And um, all that's happening, the calamity, the, the economy, the job situation, the spiritual situation, freedom, and uh, the kind of tyranny that's going on in certain governments. And the first thing it, in that meme is like, oh, what's happening today in the world? Let's turn to the book of Revelation and see which prophecy is being fulfilled. Now, that may sound a little bit um, kind of hilarious and funny because most people think people will study Anton prophetic events and revelation, the book of Revelation and other prophetic books, like immediately we run to the book of Revelation and say, okay, what's happening today? It's exactly what the book of Revelation say. Now, not to sound too over the top spiritual, but it is in a way kind of true. Everything that the word of God has predicted and prophesied is coming to pass today. It doesn't have to go into extreme detail about, oh, this plague and that pestilence and uh, and this situation or what the government is doing and what people are doing and what uh, is happening to the economy, what's happening spiritually to the church and to the body of Christ. But what we see here is exactly how the Lord laid out his plan for planet Earth. So yeah. the, the bottom line is there's nothing to fear. I personally, I think we, we've come across people like this that uh, are so scared of prophecy. They say that don't spread fear and be um, a spoiled sport, you know, fear mongering. Well, if prophecy is not going to prepare us and if you're not prepared for what the Lord wants you to do and how the Lord wants you to live the life that he wants you to live right now, then what's the whole point of having the word of God? Most of God's word is prophetic. The first prophecy was released in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, right there. And all of you know the story. The prophecy of the coming Messiah that will crush the head of the serpent, the seed of the serpent. That was the first prophetic word released. And as we read the word of God through every book and every chapter and every verse and, and dwell in God's word, it's so amazing how people can be so misled because this is what the early church also faced, that these things are not important. Like, Many Christians say, this is just chance. This is just a coincidence, you know. God's not really interested in planet Earth. He, he's not really interested in my life or my wife's life or our family. Don't fall for that fallacy. That is just false teaching. That's just nasty garbage. You know, I, I don't want to sound again very coarse and harsh over here, but that's, that's the kind of teaching that I hear many preachers come and say that, uh, the Lord is not interested in what's happening. You know, he's sitting up there. You got to take care of your own life. It's not about me, me, me. It's all about the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ working in your life, working in your family, working in your ministry, working in your church, and working through you so that his name will be glorified and many will come to know him as Lord and Savior. So that's one of the first things that uh, we were going to dwell in 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 coming videos as we work on the material and we've had the privilege of getting time to do a lot of research and please 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 I think this goes without saying but I'm just gonna say it anyway church everything we say check it with the Word of Amen. God be barians be be a bear be a barian <laughs> be a thorough barian be a double barian or a triple barian or a quad barian or whatever you go check recheck Check, recheck. Don't just take it from me. Don't take it from Frida. Don't take it from anyone else. Be a barian. Be a diligent student of God's word and say, okay, does this line up with God's word? Now I understand that theology might change according to denominations. And uh, I heard a preacher say this recently. Christian denominations are just one of the most terrible things that was ever invented. And I agree with it. it. It's really sad because when we get people to the Lord, we feel that we have to get them to our denomination rather than point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. So denominations have different theology about end time events, especially with the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm going to give you a little example of to show you how nasty 
that it gets on social media because we are using a social media platform over here. And it's so easy to sit here with a webcam and a microphone and a keyboard and, and type out everything and thinking that, you know, we are already warriors in the kingdom of God and we have it all up over here. We know everything about the Bible. No, none of us do. We are not above the word of God. We submit to the word of God. We are not called to change the word of God. The word of God changes and transforms our lives to be more and more like Jesus. One example that there could be different theological differences is on the concept or the whole theology of the rapturo, harpazo. I'm using Greek and Latin. I don't know Greek and Latin, but the word a lot of people say is not found in the Bible, so I don't believe that. Rapture. Yeah, I know where this is going. Maybe some of you are going to say, no, this channel is not for me because I, I don't believe in that. That's okay. You, you don't have to subscribe to what we have to say and even though we might have theological differences i will view you as my brother and sister in the body of christ and we will still serve the same most high living god jehovah adonai elohim we're not serving demons over here so we might have theological differences some people look at the rapture and say is it pre mid post or none of it mm -hmm. is it the second coming clumped up together some are saying, how can God do this in the Bible? Why be now people sending a seven-year tribulation of pain, sorrow, and despair? So we're going to look into that systematically in a Bible study. Again, now you may not agree with it, and that's fine. But what I really hate that's going on, and I say this with, with, with kind of passion that moves me and Frida in ministry that the Lord has given us, is that a lot of people will separate themselves from others just because they don't get along with that kind of theology. And they feel that it's only my theology, this is what my pastor said, this is what this preacher said, or this is what this prophet said, and we have to stick to it, and there's nothing else. And even if you don't want to listen to it, that's okay with us. It's all right. And again, we're not here to gain subs or to gain a following. But we're here to lift up the name of Jesus, that believing that those who hear it will be edified and built up. This is the time to be built up, regardless of what timing or what theology you have. Be built up upon sound doctrine. Without this foundation, it's going to be bad. It is going to be bad for you. It's going to be bad for your family. And I pray and hope, church, dear brothers and sisters, that that doesn't happen to you, your family, your ministry, to your church, to the people that surround you, your, your relations, even unsaved relations, that you will serve the Lord wholeheartedly, diligently, consistently, and you will do it joyfully, that your walk with Jesus will be a joy, not a burden. He carries our burdens. We carry his yoke, which is light, which, and it's a joy for us to serve the Most High Living God. And um, the, the scripture verse that I'm going to tell Frida to read today is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 11. It's always good uh, as preachers and teachers that we go to the Word of God because it's the right thing to do, number one. And second, it builds our faith up as we hear the Word of God. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 to 11. So if you have a Bible, please turn it with it. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the father fell, fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, yes. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Yeah. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the, the, but the day of the Lord will come as, as a, thief a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seek then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all thy conversations and godliness? Praise God. Amen. 3 to 11, 2 Peter chapter 3, is an indication of Peter speaking to the churches who were there. First Peter was talking about persecution that the church was facing. Second Peter, here Peter is exhorting the church and encouraging church, saying, remember what I told you before. And he knew there were a lot of false teachers and a lot of false preachers coming and saying, you know, this Jesus Christ you keep talking about, he's not coming back. And Peter is here encouraging the church, like, let your walk be with the Lord steadfast over there. And let's just turn back to that verse over there. And as mm -hmm. Frida does that, it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Now, think about every promise, brothers and sisters, that the Lord has given you. Maybe some of it came to pass in a couple of days. Maybe some of it came to pass in a couple of years. Maybe some of it has not come to pass, but this much I know because the, Lord is the Lord's word is true. Mm -hmm. He's not a liar. Let every man be a liar, but God's word and his word alone be true. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning this promise as some men count as slackness, but is long suffering toward us that not willing that any should perish, but all this, all those who are about to perish will come to repentance. So it's basic common sense, and you're just applying biblical wisdom here that the Lord gives us. And it's easy to understand this. The Lord doesn't want to see people perish. He still has a heart out for the wicked, for the sinful, evil people over there. But guess what? And it doesn't take much of a guessing to understand this. He's placed a responsibility upon you and me. We have to take the gospel. We have to evangelize. We have to minister. And the Lord says that as long as I have my church over here to speak, to minister, to teach, to exhort, and to preach the good news of the coming kingdom of God, I know that my will is being done over here. And the Lord's will is being done in your life. You know, one person that you meet and you bless them with the word of God, you are doing the will of the Lord. Amen. So we get this question sometimes. What is God's will for me? Well, let me put this to you in a better way. What is the will of the Lord for you to do according to his word? When you read his word, you, his word says, go out and preach, go out and minister. Well, are you doing it? Well, if you're doing it, that is the Lord's will in your life. Finished. You don't need a big elaborate answer. People want to know what is God's future for me? What is God's will for me? What does the Lord plan for me? Simple. If he's planned eternity for you as a child of God, that is his promise. And as long as we run that race, fight the good fight, hold steadfast and hold on to the faith, and to be a minister of God's word so that many who are perishing will come to repentance, the Lord knows that his gospel is entrusted in our hands and his gospel is safe in our hands. We become instruments in his kingdom. Isn't it a privilege? Just that much? Sometimes we think, okay, God, I, I, I'm looking at your will. I want your will so that I can have a beautiful house, a, a beautiful family, a beautiful spouse, a beautiful kids, you know, a wonderful job. I'll be successful. Everybody will know me. That's not the Lord's will for you. Those probably will happen or will not happen. I want to have great health. I don't want to ever fall sick. That's not going to happen either. We still have a corruptible mm -hmm. body. So that's definitely going to happen. I, I don't want to... Um, Again, in any financial mess, usually that comes a lot because of our bad choices. But the Lord says, my will for my church is exactly what's stated in Second Peter from 3 to 11. The Lord's will is that as you enjoy His goodness and His mercy and His loving kindness, and you start to preach and you teach and you minister, you will be blessed. The doors that the Lord has for you will start to open as you start ministering and speaking His word in love and in boldness and in compassion. So your will should not be for others to perish. Your will should be for others to come to the repentance so they will see the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just imagine people who prayed for you, people who ministered to you. Frida comes from a, a Catholic background and our spiritual mentor, our pastor led Frida to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It was not just because she said, the sinner's prayer and everything magically just took place. No, it took a lot of time 
and a lot of effort for Frida and an entire family to understand what they were into and how to come out from it from God's word over here. And that pastor sat and ministered and ministered and spoke so much that there was conviction in the spirit because it's a salvation that comes from the Lord. And that is the will of the Father in our lives, to see souls getting saved. Because the Lord says, I've given you my yoke. It's light. Bear it. And it goes on to here say that people are going to come and say, you know what? Jesus ain't coming back. He's got no time for you. You're just going to live out planet on planet Earth. You're going to die, fade away, and no one's ever going to remember you. No one's going to ever think about you. Well, I go back to the Word of God. And uh, I've had it till here, I think, personally, <laughs> with all these naysayers and scoffers. Let them come. It's okay. And we're praying for the scoffers that they will know the truth of the Word of God and the Kingdom of God. Then they say, where is this coming? Where is this coming? 2,000 years ago. This is 2,000 years ago. Peter is not in a difficult position. He's not sweating and saying, oh, no, I don't know what to tell these people. You know, they're going to probably stone me and they're going to probably harass me and, and accuse me of being a false preacher and all that. But Peter is standing boldly upon God's word. Here's the man who denied the Lord Jesus three times. He's, he's standing boldly and saying, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. They are all these scoffers and mockers. They are going to see the Lord come. And when he comes, he's coming back in glory. He's coming back for his bride, for his church. So we want to end this evening with a word of exhortation. Exhortation is like um, you go to a sporting event. Right here in India, it's cricket. Personally, I'm not into cricket, so please don't unsubscribe because of that. <laughs> okay. I, I like football I'm, and maybe some other major sports. So let's just take football as an example. Um, you've got opposing teams. You've got Bangalore versus Chennai or, or Mumbai. And you're playing the match in Bangalore and all the, the fans on the Bangalore Football Club, they're cheering them on and shouting and yelling and getting all loud and rowdy sometimes, uh, not like the British soccer fans or the football fans. And they're just cheering their team on and that guy's dribbling the ball, the main player from the Bangalore football team, and he scores against Mumbai or Chen or any other team and everyone erupts in joy and the referee blows the whistle and everyone jumps over the stand and they run to this guy they just surround him jump on him carry him you know put him on on their shoulders and yay burst firecrackers at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> so just imagine if you're a cricket fan or a cricket lover that goes on hey we got a six we got a century and everyone's cheering them on and that's what exhortation is when we start cheering and encouraging a brother and sister in the body of Christ. Now, I can do that in my own strength as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Frida can do that in our own strength as much as possible. But it's not going to make any effort because this is not a football match. We're talking about souls here. We're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about the church of Jesus Christ, where he's the head and we are members in his body. We're talking about the kingdom of God, which is much more, much more beautiful and greater than any football match. Exhortation comes from the word of God. And when we start reading the word of God and singing the word of God, meditating on God's beautiful scripture, and, and maybe you have your favorite verse, and we are exhorted. And then when, when the body of Christ is exhorted, we rise up to that challenge to do the will of the Father and move under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit says, do this, we do. When the Holy Spirit says, go there, we go there. We say, yes, sir, without any question, without any doubt, without any fear, because we know our lives are in the Lord's hands. So, this is a beautiful psalm of exhortation. It's Psalm 63, and if you have your Bibles or your tablets or mobile devices, please turn over there. You know, you don't have to keep looking at us. You got your Word of God. Dwell, look into the Word of God. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 4, and we are going to read this together. And as we do it, exhort each other in your family and exhort the body of Christ. And above all, lift up the name of Jesus over here. 63 verses 1 to 4. 
O God, God thou, thou art my God, God. Early, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen and amen. amen. Let it be a word that exalts you. Let our lips praise the Lord. Let our hands praise the Lord. Early in the morning, we're seeking the Lord. Late in the afternoon, late in the evening, late at night, we seek the Lord from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea. Now, Frida and I, we're going to close over here, and she didn't know I was going to do this, so it's a little bit of a surprise. I was going through some old, um, what we call choruses, praise, oh, worship. praise and worship choruses. choruses from Maranatha and Vineyard, because I, I love that stuff and some old hymns. And there was one that we used to sing, I, I did, but I want to read the words, the lyrics to this. Maybe you know this. It's called Rain in Me. <laughs> Rain in me, sovereign Lord. Rain in me. Rain in me, sovereign Lord. Rain in me. Captivate my heart. Let your kingdom come. Establish there your throne. Let your will be done. Amen. So if you know that chorus, Reign in Me, Sovereign Lord, you can check it up on YouTube or maybe get the lyrics online. And I encourage you to listen to that. And as you listen, you start singing that in your home, over your family. You will see, and not just sense, but you will definitely see the goodness and the will of the Father being done in your life. So again, if somebody ever comes up to you and say, what is God's will for me? Tell them, get to the Holy Scriptures. Everything you want to know about God's will is there. And today we're going to release a prophetic word to you. But we are not prophets and prophetess. <laughs> but we're going to release this prophetic word especially for you. And this is what the Lord is speaking to us to tell you. Ready for it? Read God's word. Simple as that. Go to the word of God. You want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? You want to hear the voice of Abba Father? Get into his word. Put aside time. Personal devotion, devotion with your spouse, devotion with your family, devotion with your community and your loved one's relation. Start speaking the word of God. Start studying. Be a diligent student. And that is a prophetic word we wanted to release into your life this day. Get into the foundation of God's word and love God's word. Hold on steadfast. So church, have a blessed week ahead of you. And may the Lord watch over you. May the Lord prosper you. And may the Lord's goodness and mercy and grace Rest upon you, your family, your loved ones, even your unsaved loved ones, your neighborhood, your community, your church, and all those that you come across. Be a blessing to others. Release the word of God and also start proclaiming and confessing God's word into your life and over your situations. And remember, we can sing it beautifully. Reign in me, sovereign Lord. Reign in me. You've captivated my heart. Let your will be done. So have a blessed week, and we bid you, the Lord bless you, and watch over you, and strengthen you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Shalom, church. And may the name of Jesus be lifted up in your lives. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. God bless. God bless.